Does Kid Ham realize the resource he has directly underneath his big boat? Does he realize that he is sitting upon a foundation of trillions of fossils? And he's not making good use of them. Hmm, I'm in the education business, and I've given some advice to Ken Ham and the Ark Encounter in the past when it first opened. They did not take that advice, and I'm going to give it again. I've got a new idea for an educational resource, for a way that they can use the natural resources that they sit upon to educate their audience. Will they take me up on it? <laughs> I don't think so, because to do so, we'd cost them money. Hmm, okay, so now... Back to uh, the relevance of this, All right? I'm just, you know, like cool, cool fossils, learn a little bit more about the Cincinnati uh, arch and all these Ordovician um, fossils. And, but I was thinking about the Ark Encounter. And here's, here's what I had pointed out in a blog post uh, many years ago, actually at the opening of the Ark Encounter when I first toured it. And they have a mining sluice or a, a what's called a fossil find there, right? Because, you know, great. Kids love to find fossils. And so here you are at the Ark and you're talking about the age of the earth and you're talking a lot. Of, Ken Ham talks a lot about fossils. So, hey, go out and explore the fossil sluice and find your own fossils, right? So the Ark Encounter provides fun for all ages and is located by the uh, Children's Zoo. Actually, I think they changed the location since I originally visited, because now it's like way back in the back part next to the zoo. Ah, now here comes the part. Here comes the thing. Purchase your bag of dirt. See prices below. I'm going to show you those. And head over to the panning sluice to see if your bag contains, what is it? could it contain? It could cane, contain amber, horn coral. Now, horn coral are found in the Cincinnati Arch, um, but they're not... Uh, they're not, they're usually embedded in that limestone, All right? So that's not the type of coral or the, the, the that's not the source of the horn coral, I don't believe, uh, that they're using for this fossil find. Uh, petrified wood or shark's tooth fossils. Now, how does the fossil sluice work? You buy your little bag of dirt and in that bag of dirt, they've embedded one of those types of fossils or maybe a combo package. Hmm. Like, the Mega Strike bag for $55. You can buy a large bag that might have multiple of those different types of fossils in it. And then you take it over to the fossil sluice, which is just, you know, water running down through a trough. You pour your dirt into these little sifters, right? A little wooden box that has a screen on the bottom. So you, you pour your dirt into there and then you put it into the water that's running by and you shake it and of course, the dirt, which is smaller particles, will get washed away. And then what's left are your harder item, harder, larger items, which are the fossils. And so within minutes, probably seconds in some case, you've discovered what fossils you have. All right? What a wonderful learning opportunity. And there's a picture. I don't have a, I'm not showing you the picture, but there is a big picture that shows you like, here's the type of fossils you could find and here's what they are. Uh, you know, and so as it says here, you can learn about a biblical perspective this way. The history of God's word provides a framework for understanding fossils. Not only will your family enjoy revealing and identifying the fossils from your, your bag of dirt, but you'll also learn about the science of paleontology from a biblical perspective. Yes, there is a little sheet of paper you can take away from it after you've paid your eight bucks to $55 that will give you some sort of like, how were these fossils formed? Oh, well, there was a big flood and it, you know, covered everything up. And if there was a, you know, a, uh, what was one of the fossils, you know, a horn coral, then it got covered over and that's why it was preserved. Now, that doesn't have, the way you're finding these fossils is, is, you know, has nothing to do really, all right, with where you typically find fossils and how you find them, all right? So, yeah, petrified wood. Yeah, you find that in a dirt bag. All right, here it is. Oh, there it is. I found this fossil. I'm sure that there are some kids that, I mean, just playing in water, all right, and uh, finding something inside of there. I'm sure they get excited about that. How much do you really learn about the process of paleontology, the science of paleontology from this? Basically, pretty much nothing. But here's the thing that really 
gets me about this, all right? Well, besides the price, <laughs> here's your, your little gem bag or your mother load bag, $30 you're paying. Now, of course, they had to go out and purchase from some source uh, a bunch of little tiny pieces of fossilized wood, of which there's a lot in this world, right? The things that are in these bags are cheap items of which there are hundreds of millions uh, available to buy at a cheap rate. So this is a cash cow for any kid or parent that buys this for the kids is basically making a donation to the Ark Encounter this way. Now, I understand a lot of parents are like, that's fine. They understand they're making a donation and they're happy to do that because they believe in the ministry. But this is just uh, grifting among uh, many other ways in which they raise money uh, at the Ark. This is just, to me, too much, especially when they have an amazing resource right underneath their feet and right visible to most people who go to the Ark Encounter if they knew where to look. But does the Ark Encounter ever point out or show where they can find those fossils or see those fossils on their own property? Not that I can tell. A search of the Ark Encounter uh, website and of the Answers and Justice website. They barely ever have even talked about Ordovician fossils other than Andrew Snelling who wrote an article about Ordovician fossils and talked about how there's, you know, so many of them under our feet. And his whole point was, oh, there's lots of fossils there. That's what you expect to find in a flood. A flood washed all these fossils there and oh, you know what else is like totally unexplainable? The fact that these fossils are marine fossils and we're here in northern Kentucky, and the ocean is 800 miles away. So checkmate anyone else who believes in anything other than a global flood. Because how could you possibly get these marine fossils to Ohio and Kentucky? All right, I'm in education. I think about education pedagogy, how to teach, how to make a point, uh, and I design labs. And here's what I suggested a number of years ago to Answers in Genesis, and I'm going to elaborate on a little bit more here. Right, You are sitting on a trillion fossils in your possession. Um, I mean, I don't know what the laws are in Kentucky in terms of how far down you own the land, because sometimes there's mineral rights or like oil rights or something like that you might not have. Uh, there might be mining rights, but there's no oil right here and there's no other mines for other things underneath Answers in Genesis. So I suspect that basically you take their land and Everything underneath them is theirs or available to them for them to use. Answers in Genesis has an infinite, near infinite supply of fossils that they could simply give to every person who entered the doors there. Even if they have a million visitors a year, they could give every single one of them a bag of fossils and they wouldn't even be close to running out of fossils to give away without even scratching the surface of their property. And the Creation Museum has the same thing, right? There are places there, all they have to do is take a backhoe, dig up some of this material, put it in a giant pile, right? And say, hey, do you want some fossils? You wanna find some fossils? Look in this big pile. You could set it out on tables and have people look at it and take home whatever they wanna take. If you want to charge, charge them something. But of course, <laughs> you've got, like I said, infinite supply of this stuff. But here's my better idea. Right? Here's, what I, here's what I think if you want to make a really cool paleontological exhibit, which this is not, all right? This teaches virtually nothing. This is just a money grab. That's all this is. You go to a piece of a part of your property, Maybe it's toward the edge of the hill, some area that you're not going to be able to use for your, any of your other buildings or special exhibits, right? You dig a trench, you know, 20 foot trench, and you dig it down so that you can walk down through this trench. And then on the sides of this trench, you know what you're going to see? You're going to see what I showed you earlier, except that that was a more of a graded thing. You're going to see layers of limestone and shale and limestone and shale and anyone who walks by is going to be able to just look at that wall and they're going to be able to see fossils plain as day right before their faces they're just gonna there look at those fossils 
millions of fossils on both sides and they'll be able to see, oh look, there's lots of fossils here and I see certain types of fossils here and then I see this, this uh, shale layer and I see fewer fossils in there. Some of that's going to be eroding naturally over time and they're going to see some fossils coming out of that. And then you're going to see another limestone layer and they're going to see more fossils there. And then you can put labels on that. You can talk about the different layers, the types of rocks that there are there. More importantly, you can put up signs that show like what kind of fossils they can find. And so they can look at the walls and see if they can identify the, you know, which fossils are which. Now that's actually learning in place. And that's real. I mean, that is like in their land itself. They didn't have to, uh, you didn't have to make it up. They're not in a museum where somebody had to like create this fake version of stratigraphy, right? They have it on their grounds and they could create basically a walk through, you know, walk through time, except for, of course, you know, they're going to have a, they could put up their own sign. It's like, this isn't a long period of time. You know, they could have their sign about how like, well, here's how, Here's how long age people think that all these, uh, you know, I would suggest they probably wouldn't do that because it seems pretty like a pretty reasonable scenario, <laughs> but uh, they could say how these different layers represent tsunamis or, you know, whatever, like different waves across the world as the, the flood layers rose and it created these layers of fossils, right? And then they can actually look at those fossils versus the displays in the Ark Encounter itself, which are basically fake versions, well, you know, and pictures of other places. This is like the real deal. And then guess what? You've, you've dug out this trench, right? You could dig it down 20, 30 feet, make it really dramatic. All right. And since you've dug all that out, guess what you have left? You got a giant pile. You got the spoil pile from everything you dug out. What could you do with that? Oh, we could put it over here in this huge area that we call fossil finder area, right? And anybody can go out in there and they can try to find some of the fossils they just reckon, they, they identified as they went through the, the walk. And these are actual rocks that came out of that hole. And therefore they know exactly where they came from and they take home with them whatever kind of fossils they want to find. You, maybe you limit it to like, you know, you can only take the amount that fits in this little paper bag. And all you have to have done is crushed up some rocks into kind of relatively small size things. And they're going to be able to pick them up. Oh, I can see a shell in this one. Oh, there's a little coral in this one. Oh, there's a little bit of an ammonite in here, whatever. Right. Right. I see. So, but this one has a whole bunch of crinoid stems in it. And some of it's going to be limestone, some's going to be more shale, some's going to be different colored rocks, right? And even if you you want to get more variety, just go to another piece of your property and you, know, you can dig a hole somewhere. And like I said before, basically have a lifetime supply of fossils to be able to give to people coming. And it's like, well, those aren't very sexy fossils. And yeah, some of them aren't the most sexy fossils. But again, you're not giving away dinosaur bones either, are you? Right. You know, it's like petrified wood and agites. And, you know, if you want to spice this up by having some other types of fossils to show them or that they can buy or, you know, whatever. Great. But the value of like reality is is essential here. It's, it's like it's such a missed opportunity to send people away with a memory of like, those are the real fossils. They just talked about them in the Ark Impounder, like about the flood and how the flood created all these layers of rock. And I actually have a piece of it. And I, and I have some understanding, again, from my perspective, an incorrect understanding. But for Angels and Genesis, you, you've given them a piece of something that they've learned um, that comes from a, a real place at a real time. Uh, and that just becomes more real in people's minds when you do that. Now, the, again, the problem with all this is, is you've got a lot of that material and people can see like, oh yeah, there's like billions of fossils here. I've estimated there's at least a trillion uh, shells alone, brachiopods, on the Ark Encounter property. All right, and so 
it, the problem is people can see like how many fossils there are and they're not going to be paying $55, all right, to take home a little tiny bag, all right, with this material when you can see that there's like tons and tons of the material available uh, to them. So I don't understand, I, you know, of course I understand. This is simpler. This is really simple to make and do and might seem is probably more fun for smaller kids, right? But this is a missed educational opportunity from a young earth creationist perspective in my mind. But that all just feeds into my overall impression of Answers in Genesis, which is they don't care about, um, you know, real educational opportunities, right? Just get the basic story um, and go in your merry way and, you know, help support our ministry. We're not really curious about science. We're not curious about what's underneath our own ark. All right? Because what you're sitting on, what the ark is built upon, are quadrillions of fossils. And that should be an interesting story in itself for young earth creationists because they always talk about how, like, you know, Everything is a bunch of fossils were all produced in Noah's flood. And here we have, we can show you that we're on top of a giant stack of fossils. And yet, really no mention of them. No talk about them. No signs pointing them out. No pictures showing like what's under your feet here. I just, I just don't get it. Uh, like, why not take advantage of the opportunities you've been afforded with this amazing, you know, representation of massive graveyards for fossils. So there you have it. Ken Ham has built his ark, built his boat on trillions of fossils, which are really telling a story that's very different than the story that's actually presented inside of this boat. Eh, thanks for listening. Hey, subscribe, like, all those different things. We'll be back with a This Week in Creationism fairly soon. We've got a lot of things happening in the world of creationism um, that we've got to touch upon. So till then, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>